Trump has continued to frustrate judges with his groundless motions to try to dismiss or delay his various criminal trials. But never has he had a judge that, by all accounts, appears to be an accomplice in those delays. That is the only way to describe what Judge Aileen Cannon has been doing with her actions, or rather inactions, regarding Trump's classified documents trial in Florida. In a new public, in a new filing last night, special counsel Jack Smith fired back and basically told her, do your job and follow the law, or I will need to call on the 11th Circuit to force you to do so. That filing was in response to a request from Cannon for jury instructions that entertained Trump's claims that he had every right to take the highly classified documents when he left the White House un under the Presidential Records Act. Smith criticized Cannon's request as being based on a fundamentally flawed legal premise that would distort the trial. Because among other reasons, Trump's Presidential Records Act defense is not based on any facts and would be irrelevant to the 32 charges Trump faces in violating, for violating the Espionage Act. Meanwhile, Trump is continuing to try to delay the one criminal trial that is actually scheduled to begin in less than two weeks on tax day, his New York hush money case, with another groundless motion saying it should be postponed due to the large amount of pretrial publicity. Today, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg urged the judge in that trial to reject the request, writing that Trump's own incessant rhetoric is generating significant publicity. And it would be perverse to reward the defendant with an adjournment based on media attention he is actively seeking. There's been no ruling yet from Judge Juan Marchand on that motion. But late today, Marchand did respond to another one of Trump's attempts to delay the trial, denying Trump's motion for a delay until after the Supreme Court rules on Trump's claim of presidential immunity from his federal election interference trial. It's hard to keep them all straight at this point. Joining me now is Paul Butler, who can't keep it straight, former federal prosecutor, professor at Georgetown Law School, and MSNBC legal analyst. Okay, I want to start with the with Aileen Cannon. These in, jury instructions seemed crazy and to me, and I've never gone to law school. If What can uh, Jack Smith do about it, and will we soon learn what a writ of mandamus is? Uh, what Jack Smith can do is to mandamus the judge. A mandamus is different from an appeal. An appeal is this is a complicated legal issue and the judge maybe misinterpreted the law. The mandamus is an order from an appeals court to the judge. You need to follow the law right now. A mandamus is saying to the judge, you basically don't know how to do your job. Right. Maybe you should consider reconsider this <laughs> judging thing. So yeah. it's a last resort. It's Jack Smith signaling he's had it with this judge. Yeah. And he's going to do everything he can mm -hmm. to either get her kicked off the case or to make her follow the law. Yeah, I wonder if a, manda a writ of mandamus would help or hurt her Supreme Court audition, which this seems clear to me to be. L let's go back to this, because Donald Trump is trying to claim the insurrection, I mean, that, that the um, Presidential Records Act gives him the power to take these documents. But he's not being charged under that. He's being charged with a different, under a different law, the Insurrection Act. Can you then take a whole different law that has nothing to do with it and say, this is my defense? So, Joy, I'm going to try to explain this. It's not going to make a lot of sense, but it's not me yeah. not making sense. It's okay. Judge Cannon. Yeah. So, uh, proposed jury instructions, they come at the end of the trial after the jury has heard all of the evidence. It's weird that the judge is asking for jury instructions right now. Right. She has not even set a trial, a trial date. date. Yeah. But it's even weirder that she's asking for proposed instructions about something that has nothing to do with the crime that Trump is charged with. He's right. charged with violating the Espionage Act. Oh, the Act. Espionage Act. Sorry for about that. Willfully yes. retaining documents that are that pertain to sensitive military information. Right. But she wants instructions about the Presidential Records Act. That's not a defense to right. what Trump is charged with. But what it does is credits Trump's claims that yeah. he just magically declassified these documents. With his like, mind. Yeah, he just thought about and all of a sudden mm -hmm. they were de declassified. And also that these documents were personal to him. They were like birthday cards. But what the FBI sees from Mar-a-Lago included documents that pertain to the nuclear capabilities right. of foreign nations. For the judge to even credit that yeah. indicates that she's just 
out of her league. Would, would I mean, it's already delayed. It's not going to happen before the election. But if, if, if Jack Smith was to do this filing to the 11th Circuit, how much would that delay everything? Uh, it, it shouldn't. If it's a mandamus, again, that's a big it's deal. Like, do so, it now. Yeah, judges, uh, appeals courts tend to decide those let's, immediately. Let's really go real quick to the, the trial that's starting April 15th. Trump is now trying to say... All this publicity is not going to let me get a fair trial. But he's the one doing the publicity. So that's going to get thrown out quick, I'm assuming. So Alvin Bragg responds in very polite legal <laughs> language like, how dare you have yeah. the nerve to complain about publicity when you're the one generating it? He, he says that, first of all, uh, this is one of the most important high-profile trials in history. Yeah. Everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Don't expect to find a juror who doesn't have an opinion about yeah. you. That's why the judge is giving both sides extra time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a long, laborious uh, jury selection process. But check this out. Trump did a poll, his defense attorneys did a poll, <laughs> and 70% of potential jurors in Manhattan yeah. said that they could be fair and objective in this case. Oh, well, that's not good news for him, because he's supposed to say it's all it's all ruined. But let me, while I have you here, get you to weigh in on this question of the gag order, the expanded gag order. Because no one else could threaten the judge's daughter. Like, this is like a, a bad rap lyric at this point. How is he not... You know, Jonathan Alter said, make him mow the lawn in, in the, in, you know, in, in the park, in Central Park. Do something. Don't they have to do something if he doesn't stop? Because he's not stopping. Uh, they don't have to, but they certainly should. It's not just anybody. It's somebody who is currently being charged with around 80 different felonies yeah. and four different criminal trials. Any other defendant who was doing things like sending out photos of the judge's yeah. daughter, her full name, that person would be under the jail awaiting trial right now. Again, Trump is being treated differently. He's yeah. being treated way better than any other criminal defendant. There are two Americans and two systems of justice. It's just not the way he says it is. Paul Butler, thank you very much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.